Anime is amazing. There are so many shows that blow me away with their storytelling. Sometimes they grip me with suspense, make me want to watch 20 episodes in a single night. Other times they grip my heart, destroy my emotions, and make it so I cannot function as a member of society the next day. And still other times, they inspire me and make me want to be a better person. Yes, I have experienced a lot of greatness from anime. So today, I want to take you on a journey of my favorites. These aren't the most critically acclaimed or anything like that. Instead, they are the ones that stuck with me. Those I keep wanting to come back to time and time again. Some of these probably won't surprise you because of how often I talk about them. Others I really should talk about more, but I haven't. Though I should definitely fix that. Anyway, let's get on with the list. You must feel vulnerable down there, all naked and paralyzed. Now then, who were you calling jailbait again? D I didn't mean anything! W what are you doing? Don't get any weird ideas! No! Uh, Aqua, help! The little rat's taking advantage of me! Yes, Megami is best girl. Also the most sane member of the cast. Probably. Really, Kondosupa is just a wonderful show. It's my favorite anime comedy of all time. Konosuba is what happens when you take the standard trapped in a fantasy world and all that and fill it with lovable idiots and have bad things happen to the characters for the amusement of all. The dynamics of the cast work so well together with all the extreme personalities and every episode made me laugh and there's typically enough of a story throughout the episodes to also be interesting. Then the movie we got last year was the peak of the series so far with it being completely hilarious and also fleshing out more with the characters and relationships and the absurd world. Overall just a fantastic comedy and anime that you definitely should watch. Makoto Misaka. And here at number 19 is a certain scientific railgun, and also accelerator, and the railgun parts of Index. This franchise is weird. If you're going to watch this, start with Railgun, and then you can figure out the rest from there. Anyway, this is one of those shows that will make you feel like you've seen it before, or at least a show like it. It's about a group of students with superpowers and the various conflicts that they get into. Railgun specifically focuses on Misaka, who is one of the most powerful in the entire city, and it's always fun to watch her overwhelm her opponents. See, she isn't just an overpowered protagonist, though, and the show is at its best when she is pushed to her limits. What really stands out about the show is the humanity we see with the characters. They are not just their powers, but we see a lot of time with them just living their ordinary life. And this makes the series feel a lot richer. In many ways, especially in the first season, it feels like a slice of life, but with a fascinating world and characters. There's also a lot of interesting ideas about power and strength, with there being a clear difference in strength among the characters. And this creates a lot of very interesting dynamics and storytelling. And lastly, I really liked how the franchise spans across so many different series, which makes it feel more grand than any single series could. Overall, a fantastic series and franchise that I'm excited to continue getting more into. The thing is, I'm really weak. I can't stand to be alone anymore. Thank you, Snow White. I suppose that now... I won't have to die. And here at number 18 is Magical Girl Raising Project. This is an entry where it's not just the show I want to highlight, but instead the entire dark magical girl genre. Because there's no other genre that better encapsulates what I like to see in anime more than this. I love seeing the ideals of magical girls with friendship and saving the world and all that slammed into a cruel world filled with suffering. The world sucks! It's filled with pain and cruelty, so the ideals of a friendship and love and all that seem kind of foolish. But the great thing about these shows is they show why the ideals are still worthwhile. At first glance, Dark Magical Girl anime may seem to be super cynical, but in fact the opposite is often true. They're stories of hope told with a backdrop of a world of despair, and that's why I love them. The reason Magical Girl Raising Project is here is because it's my favorite of the genre. It's about these 16 magical girls living in the city and what happens when they learn that the city cannot sustain so many magical girls. Violence ensues. Some really exciting violence at that. 
And I also love the twisted nature of many of the characters and the backstories that led them to be magical girls. It also has one of my favorite villains in the anime too, just because of how unique she is with her background and mindset. And then the other thing that makes the show so stand out is that it actually sticks to a bittersweet ending. While the main character has kept to her ideals, she's also grown throughout this and changed. Overall, just a great anime, though to be fair, I have not found a dark, magical girl show that I actually dislike. Now if only they could complete their stories, that would be ideal. Well, and no one can say that I do not have variety in my favorites, because we're going from shows about cute girls doing violent things to cute girls doing cute things. k is a show that doesn't seem to have much to it with being a pretty basic show about girls in a music club. But you don't watch k for the plot, nor the plot, but instead the experience. Through the show, and especially the second season, I really felt like I was experiencing the joy of high school with the characters. It's peaceful, relaxing, and most importantly, fun. There is also a degree of sadness because of how the show kept reminding you that their high school life is nearly over. It reminded me of how I felt during my senior year of high school, that even when the end seemed so far away, it also felt like the end was unstoppably approaching. Plus, the show just has great comedy, and especially the movie here. k is special. If you ever want to just calm show to relax to, I cannot think of anything better. Stein's gate will finally swing open to admit me. Not that again. Give the crazy the day off. You are remarkably close-minded for a scientist. All right. Enough slice of love, anime. Time for the good stuff. Steins Gate is an amazing suspense show about time travel. It really takes advantage of the storytelling that time travel enables. Cause and effect can be reversed. A character can experience a hundred years in the time another character experiences a second. And two characters can experience two completely different worlds. Plus, the main character, Okabe, is just amazing. One of my favorite in all anime. He's a self-proclaimed mad scientist and a ton of fun to watch. But more than that... He's a character that deeply cares for those around him. And when he loses those he cares about, he's willing to go through anything to get them back. The voice acting is also amazing, in both the dub and the sub. And the English dub has such an amazing script, which makes the show even better. Why do I keep punching things? And why is the furnace on? Like I said earlier, don't go pushing your snobby ideals on- You listen to me, Tail Red, and you listen good. Remember these words. It is not me that is dying. It is literature! You guys expected this. No top list of mine is complete without Twin Tails. Because Twin Tails is the most amazing anime to ever exist. And I am only being partly sarcastic here. Twin Tails is great. It's about this guy who turns into a twin tail of magical girl to save the world from aliens who want to steal the love of Twin Tails from the world. Now I know what you're thinking. This sounds weird. But rest assured, it is even weirder than it sounds. The evil aliens are all perverts. The main guy's mother wants him to get laid. And despite the love of Twin Tails, the main guy is the most sane character in the show. It's just insane. You have boob rockets, bondage, and the message that if you love Twin Tails, anything is possible. Plus, the English dub is one of the best I've ever heard. They go all out with lines that fit how ridiculous the show is. But you know, as insane as the show is, and it is, that's not why I love it so much. Instead, what I love is the ideals within the show. Take away all the insanity, and you will find a story about growing up and what it means to follow your passions. As we grow up, the pure love we had for passions can become clouded. Life gets in the way. The expectations of others get in the way. We get in our way. And Twin Tails is a rallying cry against that, and a reminder of the beauty of our passions when embraced with purity. And that is why it is one of my favorite anime of all time. Or put it another way, Twin Tails is my literature. <laughs> Fate's Day Night is hard to describe. It's about the Holy Grail War, the clash of mages and historical figures they summon as servants, but it's also much more than that. 
It's about the ideas of being a hero and how noble goals can be twisted for evil. Plus, it just is awesome in action and suspense and all that. The thing that stands out to me most about Fate is how much of it there is and how the many series make the franchise as a whole better. There are different characters and ideas explored through each route of Fate and they flesh out the universe and storytelling of the others. Even the 2006 adaptation is a solid addition to the franchise despite its issues since it establishes Shiro's desire to be a hero and counter the legacy of his father. So yes, this ranking includes all three routes of Fate Stay Night and Fate Zero of course, plus also Fate Apocrypha since despite it being a completely separate story, still adds to the overall lore and themes of Fate. Though if you do watch Apocrypha, note that it spoils a bit of Heaven's Feel. This ranking though does not include Green Order because I haven't seen it, nor Last Encore because, well, that was kind of bad. It also doesn't include Fake Lead for reasons that will soon become apparent. Yes, I'm saying that Fake Lead is better than the main franchise. At least according to me. At first glance, it may be hard to see what makes Khalid so special. It appears to be a fun Magical Girl spin-off, and while this is true, there's also much more here. It is also a clash of the hope that fills Magical Girl anime with the despair that fills fate, and the blend of these two opposites makes Khalid amazing. The pointless Slice of Life episodes have meaning because of the unseen backdrop, and the most horrifying moments have more power because of the hope beyond what the characters see. Khalid borrows a lot from Fate, obviously, but it also creates its own story, letting it stand apart from, and in my opinion, above its parent series. <laughs> Symphogear is the best. Now you might be wondering how that can be true with Symphogear being ranked at number 12 on my list. And if you think like that, you obviously don't understand Symphogear logic. Symphogear is the most extreme, ridiculous, over-the-top action show I've ever seen, and I love Trigger. Symphogear challenges the status quo, asking the viewer to consider that bondage may in fact be the answer. And it proclaims that just maybe, the IT professionals of the world may end up becoming its saviors. You may think nothing I'm saying makes a lick of sense, but there's nothing strange about it at all. Because Symphogear is even more insane than I'm describing. Though like my favorite absurd anime, it's more than just absurd. It is a story about finding friendship and a place to belong. It's a story of overcoming tragedy. It's a story about the power of human connection. There is a special feeling that anime leaves a viewer with. You know the feeling you get when you see the heroes overcome impossible odds in your favorite shows. That is the feeling that Symphogear celebrates. While being a one-of-a-kind anime, it is a celebration of the storytelling the medium is famous for. Plus, it even explains the ending of Evangelion. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why Symphogear is the best. Maybe everyone in the world is walking around with plums on their backs. All different kinds. No two of them are exactly alike. But since they can't see their backs, they can't see the plums that make them unique. Toru is the best. I don't think anyone who is a fan of the show can argue with that statement. Fruits Basket is a drama about a young woman, Toru, and her interactions with the Soma clan. Throughout the series, we see how broken the Somas are, and how Toru is able to help them through the brokenness. Now, it's not like everything is better at the end of each episode, or even the season. But the characters are fighting to change, and that's what's important. The reason I like the show so much is because of just how inspirational it is. I want to be more like Toru. And I think everyone can see themselves in at least a one of the Somas. Only a season one is out so far, so there's a lot I don't know about the series. But if seasons two and three are as good as the first one, this is going to be an incredible ride. <laughs> this is perfect. There's no reason for me to be worried. After all, this is proof that they don't have anything on me yet. So this whole thing is nothing more than a contest between Al and me. And here at number 10, we have Death Note. This really is the classic suspense thriller that is loved by the anime community. Well, except for that part of the show. The mind games between Light and L were so amazing, it was fun to see the clash between their like 10-dimensional plans going against each other. 
I'm actually kind of stuck on more good things to say about the show because that's that is really the appeal. It's that the mind games of suspense, but that's all there needs to be for it to be amazing. So go check it out if you haven't, and I think you'll understand why it is recommended so much. That's just the way things work out. Huh? So what if it starts as a lie? Things change, so maybe one day that lie will become the truth. Huh? And at number nine is Zegapain. This is a weird anime. It is a pack where a high school student is roped into piloting a robot to save, well, the world. Kind of. And the world of Zegapain is fascinating. It reminds me of Evangelion quite a bit with all the mysteries about, like, what's really going on? What's the true nature of everything? And throughout the show, the characters uncover the truth about what is going on. It also asks the question of what is better, to live a peaceful lie or to experience a terrifying truth? And since I don't want to spoil much, I will just tell you to go check it out because it really is something amazing. Hey! It's Ray! He's here! Welcome back, Ray. Dinner is ready and waiting. Hurry up! We're starving! What took you so long? Did you bring us? I- March Comes In Like a Lion is one of those shows that will emotionally break you to build you up again. It is about a young man named Ray who is a professional shogi player, though he is alone. He's content in his loneliness, but only because he has no other choice. Or at least, he feels he has no other choice. And the show is about him finding a place where he belongs, where he's loved. There's so much about Ray that I love. We can see the peace that he finds with those who embrace him. We see how his life becomes filled with color. Literally, the art style changes when he's with the family. And I can relate to these moments. There's also a ton of care put into the show, making every scene as great as possible. Visually, it's one of the best anime ever. Not for being super flashy, but the way every frame tells a story, raising the show so much higher than it would be otherwise. This is my favorite slice of life ever, and I honestly can't see that changing for a long time. Hey guys, what is this? A gate. It connects the inside and outside. Outside? We've never been outside. That's because we haven't left here since being born. And at number seven, we have The Promised Neverland. This is a show for me. It felt like every aspect was designed to be something that appeals to me. You have innocent children thrown into a harsh world. A great suspense story where we wonder if they will survive. Tons of great plot twists, mind games between the heroes and villains, and to top it off, a determination to overcome the impossible. But what I really love about Promise Neverland is that it shows that it is not just determination that will let the heroes win. They learn the hard way that when they rely on determination, they will only lead to disaster. But they still find reason to hope, to fight on, and to figure out a way that they might just be able to save everyone. And when everything came together at the end of that first season, well, those were some remarkable episodes. Soldiers! Let them have it! Humans! (laughs) Soldiers! Follow those two fools into battle! And here at number six, we have ReZero. This anime blew me away. The concept seems unoriginal. A guy is transported to a fantasy world with the minor twist that time resets when he dies. But what we get here is proof that a cliche concept can be used to tell an amazing story when given the proper care. The main character, Subaru, is what you expect from an anime main character. He's determined, has a good heart, and wants to save every beautiful girl he comes across despite barely knowing them. But he is also an idiot. I mean, really, any character who has this mindset would be. And the world shows him how wrong he is, how his noble desires are foolish. But it is also his foolishness that lets him succeed. And I love that, how his determination and idiocy is both his strength and weakness. Throughout the season, he is forced to become aware of his flaws, and I love this. Subaru is a great character. I really want to see him succeed. And that's why it's so devastating to see him fail. Which he does often. He sees those he cares about taking from him. Not to mention some terribly violent deaths for him in the process. Yeah, he has a whole return by death thing. But that does not take away the trauma of what he has faced. Though it's not just Subaru that's a great character. Every character in the show feels like they could be the main character in their own story. 
every member of the cast feels like they could be the main character in their own story. From the main love interest, Amelia, to the young thief, Felt. From the main love interest, Amelia, to the young thief, Felt. To the very popular girl whose name seems to be missing here. Anyway, this is not a simple story. But an epic that could go down in the history of anime for how great it is. Sadly, with only one season, there is only so much we see. But I am really excited for season two. And I hope that this story will get completed in a full adaptation. Because it could be one of the greatest anime of all time. I don't want to hear this! What's the point of listening to all this depressing crap? For all we know, it's a bunch of lies. I hate it too. But there are still some questions that I need answered. I want you to tell us how our society was born. That's all I really want to know. Shinseki Yori of From the New World is a type of show where things seem to be happening for no reason for a while. But then they come together in a beautiful way. Or a horrifying way, depending on your perspective. It's a show about a society where people have telekinetic powers. And the society seems to be living in peace, where everything is perfect. But there are cracks in the seemingly perfect society. And throughout the show, we see the society and its failings explored by a group of kids as they grow up. And then there is a fantastic villain. I think the best one in all of anime here. So yeah, just a fantastic show. Though you do need to be patient with it, as the beginning is definitely a bit slow, though in my opinion, it was a great start as well. And there really is nothing else like this one. Now having heard this dismal state of affairs, whoever still wishes to put their life on the line and join us, remain here. But first ask yourself, can you give your heart? Can you give everything for humanity? Attack on Titan is a show I keep liking the more I see it. It is an epic story about mankind attempting to survive against Mandian giants. The action and suspense for the show is incredible because you have all the life and death stakes, the breathtaking visuals, and the incredible music that creates a feeling like no other. And there is a larger than life sense to the show too, especially with the characters. They have all these grand ambitions for freedom or revenge or power or whatever it is, and that makes them just fun to watch. Not to mention all the tragedy that befalls them. Yeah, not a happy series. And the world for the show is also incredible. At first, the focus of the anime was on the survival against the Titans, but then there is a political drama in the underlying history of the world that Attack on Titan explored throughout Season 3. It is a show that I can say fully deserves its popularity, especially with how it closed off its last season. Officially, you will now be known as the Full Metal Alchemist. I like that. It's nice and intimidating. I think that'll suit me just fine. For a long time, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood was my favorite show. And while a couple of shows have since surpassed it, it was the show that truly showed me what anime was capable of. It is about these two brothers seeking to undo the mistakes of their past combined with a grand adventure that takes them across all corners of their country. Full Metal Alchemist is a show that balances all the emotions that make anime great. It has comedy, epic moments, heartwarming moments, heart-wrenching moments, and the inspiration that it is possible to make the world a better place with your own two hands. It has a cast filled with very human characters, all who get time for their story to be told. And then the tapestry of all these individual stories come together in one of the most satisfying endings in anime. I'm actually a bit sad that those who are newer to anime might not have gotten the chance to experience the greatness that is Full Metal Alchemist. And if you're one of those people, go watch this one right away. Both the original and Brotherhood are well worth your time. The Brotherhood is my personal favorite of the two. Dig in! My mom's the best cook in the world! Over there you got some croquettes filled with I don't know what, and in the pot there's miso soup with all sorts of unknown things in it! Oh, don't listen to her. I only use non-poisonous ingredients. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Kill a Kill is special. From this list, you know I like Absurd Anime, and it's no surprise. So it is no surprise I like Kill a Kill. Because it is completely ridiculous in every way possible. But that's not enough to be number two on my list. No. What makes this stand out apart from the other shows is how it combines the ridiculous with a really exciting and surprisingly deep story. It starts off as a story of revenge. It's actually kind of slow. 
But through these slower parts, Kill a Kill is able to flesh out its characters and world to really ground the show and delve into some ideas that only work because the show is so extreme. Kill a Kill is not subtle with its themes, but because the show is so boisterous, it can bash you over the head with its ideas and it doesn't feel off-putting. It's also a show about growing up, told in a way like no other. And I love all the twists as the show gets further along with the last arc being some of my favorite episodes in all television. The production values were also the best I've ever seen, with every animation and sound choice adding to the story being told and the emotions the story is meant to convey. The show may seem like utter nonsense, but nonsense is just how it rolls, and it takes its own path no matter what anyone else says. There are stories about every hero, how they became great, most have one thing in common. Their bodies moved before they had a chance to think. Young man, you too can become a hero. No one should be surprised at my number one pick. When I do my annual top list, I like to surprise you with my pick for number one, but there's no point to it here. My Hero Academia is my favorite anime ever. It draws me in with an appeal that no other show can, and I get so excited at seeing the heroes overcome the obstacles and the way that they can find hope when fate itself seems against them. And there's also a certain purity of the show, that even as things look bad, there's always a reason to hope. A lot of this comes to All Might as a character who is so inspirational. He is a hero to the world, but throughout the show we see his flaws, which make him even more heroic. I don't want a hero that's perfect. I want one that's imperfect, but saves people anyway. And I love how the heroes are filled with a noble desire to save people, especially in the overhaul arc with the focus it gave uh, to Togeda and Fatgum and Nidai. They all have their different ways of doing things, but they came together, willing to risk everything for the sake of the innocent. And one of the things I love about this show is how they aren't just physically saving people, but all throughout the series, the heroes are saving people's hearts. From the battle with the slime monster at the start of the show, to the sports festival, to the battle with Stain, to the fights against Muscular, and of course, Overhaul. There's always more at stake than just the physical well-being of the character. The show also illustrates the power of heroes, and I truly believe that the message of the show is that anyone can be a hero. And then you have the League of Villains too, which are so interesting, especially Shigaraki. And I don't know exactly where the show is going with them, but I want to find out. And yeah, there is so much to this show. So much I love. But I hope this rambling is enough to explain why it's my favorite anime of all time. And that is my list of my 20 favorite anime of all time. Let me know if you found anything else on here that you want to go watch now. Or if you have any things that you think I should watch, especially keeping this list in mind and knowing what I like. I'm always interested in different recommendations people give me and why they think I would like that. So make sure you do so. And I can't wait to see what great shows I will uncover next.